Welcome everybody to the China Sir bleh, China Show, episode one hundred and sixty nine. That's、uh, very reminiscent of、uh, a video I'm doing right now.、Mm-hmm. Um, but you'll find out what that's about next week, probably this weekend. Sure. Anyway, one sixty nine—that's a nice number. We got quite the show for you today. We're going to be talking about tofu drinks. We're going to be talking about a city drowned in craziness.、Um, yeah, so stay tuned. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Actually, let's just.、Uh, yeah, six nine. Yeah, it's like it's nice. Yeah. Like yeah. I said. Anyway, six nine. Guys, We're out six nine. <laughs> yeah.、Uh, <laughs> let's just saunter right into it with what's new. Where we talk about everything that's new, specifically with regards to China, and I don't know if I've ever seen a situation like what you're going to see behind us right now. This happened now today. Yes. Okay, in China, in、uh, Shanghai,、uh, Wuxi. Wuxi. This is Wuxi, which near, is near nearby. Shanghai, yeah. yeah. I'd like you to pay attention to this.、Uh, I'll just get us out of there. Pay attention to this road here for a second. You might spot something. Yeah. Did did you see? That is did amazing. By the way, why do we have snow in the background? Yeah, I just want everyone to cool down. We know there's a heat wave coming. Absolutely, well, slash happening. And right now,、mm-hmm. if you're feeling hot, you're gonna look at this and you go, "Ooh, I'm feeling nice and chilly, refreshed." Yeah, exactly. Anyway, play that again. Why you can't just leave us at that two-second clip? Okay, you want to see it again? All right, it's amazing. I'll leave us here in this time, but take a look. Imagine driving along and fish are leaping, <laughs> literally leaping in front of、Holy、your car. Holy crap! This is on the highway, by the way. Yeah, you can、so、see there there's are, a tunnel over there. There are fish leaping out on the highway、mm. in eastern China right now. Yes, in the, very, in the richest area. We're going to get into that obviously a little later because it's it's crazy, especially what's happening in Shanghai right now. Yes. Anyway, we thought we'd show you something funny.、Um, we all know about、uh, electric scooters, right? Yeah. Now I believe this is in Taiwan. Is it?、Um, well, we don't know. Well, it could、But、be Taiwan. It's a could Chinese scooter. I know、yeah. that. Well, one thing you can do is with these、uh, scooters is, and I've done it myself. You can soup them up. Yeah. Okay. And a, you a can great risk. Of course, I mean, like they catch fire and <laughs>、yeah. stuff. But I used to do that in in Shenzhen. Yeah. And you can make them go really fast. So、yes. this guy's like souped it up, and he's obviously got his friend to try it out. It's like, hey, give it a shot. Like, here we go. Let's see what happens. I wonder if you can guess. Let's take a look. Yeah, got, yeah, yeah. I think did what I think happened happen. What did something come off? In every motorcycle accident I've ever seen in my entire life, what comes off? Shoes, shoes. Let's see if it happens. Okay, so I mean, he's like, here, here, go, go, try it out, try it out. Okay, well, I'll leave this in. Go, go, go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, what did you see? Yeah, I saw the shoe. It's like every it's like、time. magic. Every single motorcycle accident that I've been a part of or、yeah. witnessed. When I broke my knee, my shoe came off. There's the shoe. There it is.、Yeah. Anyway, I mean, he's obviously not badly hurt or anything, no, but it's, it's just kind of funny to see. YouTube, don't you dare <laughs> freak out about something so stupid. Yeah, it's a minor, minor, slow collision. Yes, chill out. All right. So anyway,、uh, are we gonna get? Is, that's not all that's in what's new. <laughs> no, there's a lot. Why is there like a gap? Because. 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 I love this like blank space. Okay, all right. What do we got? That was that was obviously a there's like a blank space in front of this video.、Mm-hmm. I thought this is a funny clip,、uh, funny clip going around China right now. Some good Chinese humor. Okay,、I、let's let's、one. let's play it and see. It's got what's subtitles. So it's got got subtitles. Yeah. Okay. Is it the whole full screen or just that part? Should it get us out of here or not?、Uh, we can say. Okay. All right. All right. Let's take it.、Mm. So far. Super credit card. Credit card. Hey, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Come on. Hmm. Come on. 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 Yeah. <laughs> 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 
，还能吃啥呢？这样吧，大家看。Yeah, it's obviously a funny skit, but you know, yes. is that that powder crap that you, I think I, so? Can we explain yeah, that? Yeah, there's this. I hate to say it, but there's this terrible, terrible like specialty in China. It's just kind of a snack. It's only in Hangzhou area, like eastern China. But I would get this very, very yeah, often because Pe- people always visit that region. Yeah, yeah, and then they bring it back. This is a local specialty, and <laughs> it looks nice because basically they take—I guess they take powder and then they compress it into different shapes. Dude, we forgot to include that in the food tier list. That yeah. would have been the lowest, like the worst. So it'll look like a little cake, yeah, or a little biscuit, or a little something, like a little bridge, yeah, a little, little and and they look in, intricate, nice because yeah. they compress them in the, in a mold. Yeah, right. And then when you bite into it, it's like chalk powder. It's, it's just worse. It sucks all the yeah, and it's just it, and it, and it, it like breaks into powder. And you'll inhale. <coughs> and you yeah. Cough. Yeah. It's. I mean, anyone who's who who knows what we're talking about will know what we're saying is a hundred percent true. Uh, it's just not a good snack. So it's I guess so that's what bad. they're eating. It's probably, I forgot. Is that like funbing or something? I can't remember what it's yeah. called. Yeah. Yeah, whatever it is, is awful. Powder cake. I think this is what I call it. Yes, powder cake. Exactly. So, guys, um, we are about to show you some absolute craziness when it comes to tofu dray construction, and also when it comes to the crazy sort of flooding that's Keep- going on. And it's actually all tied together. Yeah. Um, so oh, yeah, I, I, I want to hype it a little bit. Okay. We found some epic, crazy footage of the tofu drag construction, but it's not just buildings. We feel mm. like the buildings are overrepresented because yes. it's more importantly, the infrastructure that everyone has to use all the time. Yes. And that is, it's failing at an unprecedented rate. Yeah. Uh, so we're gonna be covering that in depth. Yeah, we got quite the, quite the show for you, but before we continue, we need to give you a word from our sponsor. So please everybody take a look and see, cause this is kind of cool. It is. Keeping a healthy lifestyle these days is tough. You get home from work, you're exhausted, and now you have to think about what to cook, what to throw together. I mean, the last thing you want to do is go to a fast food restaurant and get something on the way home because you know it's going to be unhealthy. I mean, do you even have anything that you can throw together that's healthy anyway? I mean, usually you're exhausted. You just want to put something together to eat, right? Well, how about taking all that nonsense and hassle out of your life and getting factor? Winston and I were both absolutely flabbergasted when we ate Factor's fresh, never frozen meals. We could not believe how tasty they were. I mean, a pre-prepared meal, you kind of have a preconceived notion that it's just going to be okay or not even that good. But Factor was delicious. There's 34 plus different restaurant quality options, and they're all ready in literally two minutes. You pop them in the microwave, two minutes later, you're ready to go. There's all kinds of different options depending on what you want to do with your diet. I mean, like there's regular food, but there's also keto options and there's calorie smart options if you're watching your calories and there's vegan and veggie options and there's protein plus options and all these are prepared by chefs and then on top of that, it's approved by dietitians. It has all the ingredients you need to feel satisfied all day long while meeting your goals and making sure that you're not wasting your time running around the kitchen trying to prepare food. Head to factormeals.com slash ADV50 and use the code ADV50 to get 50% off. That's code ADV50 at factormeals.com slash ADV50 to get 50% off. Thanks. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yes. Actually, props to Factor. I just want to shout out them. For legitimately delicious food. Yeah. Uh, mad convenient. And also, most importantly, they support us. So yeah. you should support them. You know how hard it is to get sponsors, and they're a really, really good company. Yeah. It's surprising. It's not a lie. When no. I when I saw it, I'm like, ah, you know, pre-prepared food. Like, how good, good could it be? And it was actually good. And I was, yes. I was actually surprised. We like, are legitimately surprised. Yes. We are we are avid users now. Yeah. Uh, so let's continue. What do we got here? You got another funny clip before we get into the tofu drink destruction. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So so what's going this on? This is it. This is an obvious skit um, yeah. that was you know f- considered funny in China, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this one I'll have to na- narrate because I didn't translate. Okay. Um, but basically the setup is uh, what will happen if a girl walks up to a stranger and tries to just randomly feed him potato chips. Yeah. Right? Give, give him a shu pian, you know. Um, but. I want to. I mean, I found this absolutely hilarious for the dumbest reasons. But anyway, let's let's okay. continue. Okay, well, we'll take a look at it. So what is he gonna? What is what will his reaction be? It's like, uh, do I know you? You yeah. know me? And she goes, just eat it. Yes, yeah, it's good. It tastes good. And he says, yeah, it's pretty good. 
It's the cut. Yeah. The cut. Can you put it back on? I'll put it back. I'll put it back. It's just the way that it transpires. It's obviously fake, right? But like, they start like sharing chips with each other, and I just love the cut to the lonely friend who doesn't move. Yeah, he's like, he's like, this sucks. (laughs) She's stolen my friend. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. So let's get into some uh, interesting infographics that's what we were going to do the tofu drinks i guess that has to wait a little bit guys don't worry don't worry because this is what's new yeah it's what's new yeah sorry tofu drinks floods you know the the the, the biblical stuff's coming okay (laughs) i'm glad you guys like that because yeah i thought that was funny (laughs) uh so pew research my one of my favorite stats places they do polling it's one of the most reliable polling places in the world yeah what they do is they poll public opinion on Mm. most things and my favorite stuff is public opinion of different countries if you're into geopolitics, you'll like to know what country thinks of other countries. Sure. You know, it's important in the way that relations work and the way laws are written and, you know, what public perception will be towards another country's government, you know. And we've watched the public opinion in the West fall about China, you know, sure. naturally. I mean, China's just treated the rest of the world and it's, like garbage. It right? is absolutely natural because, you know, here's the thing. People don't want to dislike China. Yeah. It's not like you wake up in the morning and say, hmm, I just don't want to like no. China today. It's like it's a culmination of things. It's, China had built such a good name for itself mm-hmm. in the recent, you know, like I'd say maybe 10, 15 years ago. 20, people were, 20, yeah. Yeah, 20 years ago. People were like, China's the future. Yeah. China's really rising up. China's great. Everybody, including ourselves, that's why we lived there. And we yeah. kept showing how, yeah. how good China was. We had such a positive outlook for China. Xi Jinping takes over and they start to get belligerent and and become this big cry bully yeah. and this like this spoiled brat of a country that just wants to constantly threaten and and you know like saber rattle and cause trouble and you know do all these nasty things and of course people are going to feel less and less happy about china so sure. it's not like people just decided one day it's just the, the actions of the chinese government have really kind of made it this way no and the this is there's a new poll out and i thought this was fantastic because there's a huge discrepancy in what china says in propaganda versus reality yes and what they would say is if they saw americans opinion is low of china or france's opinion is low of china whatever right they'll say oh that's just the racist americans or racist Mm. white people's opinion you know yes and what they fail to acknowledge is that asian americans in this case yes in this pew research asian americans follow very similar trends because guess what they're just americans yes and so the whole thing is that they say us chinese people we basically own asia yeah. and if you are of asian descent it doesn't matter if you're american or not if you're of asian descent then you are you're related to us not them right yes, yes. they're trying this absolutely insane thing they've been using this uh ethno-nationalism yeah that's terrible and it's they're trying to make they're trying to spread this ethno nationalism outside of their own territory, which is wild and crazy. Well, they do try to claim all of the diaspora abroad. So if you've yes. got a Chinese person, even if he was born, even if his grandparents were born in the USA, they still claim that person as being a part of China, and they constantly use it in their culture war tactics to say like, oh, look at the anti Asian hate and stuff, and Asians, yeah. you know, hate America, and you know, right. they they just want to be part of China right. and all that nonsense. They constantly use this. So but. let's so the results are in then. Let's yeah. see. So the Asian Americans so 78%. This is, this is this is the view of Asian Americans of these different countries. Yes. Right? So Asian, Asian Americans they polled them. Yes. Asian right. Americans, 78% of them have a somewhat favor very or somewhat favorable opinion of the US, okay? Yeah. And eleven percent somewhat unfavorable, which literally flies in the face of every bullshit Chinese propaganda that keeps coming out yeah. saying that Asian Americans are scared hate of being America, shot in the streets. Of America, blah, blah, they blah. don't feel like they don't belong. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm sorry, China, but seventy-eight percent of people disagree with you, and that's the majority. And that's a proper, like a proper poll. Okay? Right. That's not some clandestine study by an outsourced thing from China or something. That's no. real. No, this is real. Mm-hmm. So you go down all the way to the bottom, and lo and behold, twenty only 20% of Asian Americans yeah. find have an, a favorable opinion of China, and 52% of Asian Americans have an unfavorable opinion of China, right? Yeah. So this is where they start scrambling. This is where you get that meme where he's like trying to push the button and he's sweating. Yeah, right? exactly. This is China freaking out. They're like, wait a minute. Well, 
why did they do this poll? There must be something wrong here. Well, this is Asian Americans. What if you pulled Chinese Americans, right? Yes. So let's pull up the next poll. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Because remember, the, the narrative that comes out of China all the time is that like 98% of Chinese people approve of the government. They keep saying that. Yes. They keep going on about this. Um, and that's simply because you can't say you don't like it, right? Yes. So this is, is this Chinese or Asian Americans? Uh, so now this is even more interesting. This is breaking down each Asian American group. Right. And then what their opinion of each country is. Right. Right. So if you look at. Um, I'll get us out of there. Yeah. So if you yeah. look at Japanese, for example, 79% of pe Japanese people like the US and 92% of Japanese view their homeland favorably. They, they, they support Japan. Of course. Right? And why wouldn't they? You go down to the bottom and only 14% of Japanese people view uh, China favorably. Taiwan's a very interesting example. 76% of Taiwanese people like America. And 2% of Taiwanese Americans like China. Well, of course. Well, wait a minute. I thought they were a part of China. Well, imagine imagine someone keeps telling you that, like, this is who you have to believe yes. you are. Of course, yes. you're not going to like that. Right. You don't like a bully. Right. Mm. So this Let's is go the, to Chinese. Here's the most shocking thing here. Right, yeah. 72% of Chinese Americans view America favorably, which quite literally is the biggest slap in the face to mainland Chinese propaganda yeah. that claims that pretty much all Chinese Americans hate America and yeah. want to return to China or long to belong somewhere. Yes. And only oh, yeah, I'll get us 41% of Chinese Americans view their own homeland, China, favorably. That means the majority... No, oh, isn't that? No, that's not less favorable. No, no. Forty-one percent is less favorable. Look at the color chart. Chinese think that the U.S. is favorable. Seventy-two, forty-one percent, the hate. Yeah, don't yeah. like it. Yeah, they don't like China. You know how the scale works, right? Right. It says there forty. It's less favorable. Yeah, because it's less percentage. Right. Look at the color on the chart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Forty-one yeah. percent of people. Mm -hmm have a favorable, Chinese people have a favorable opinion of China, which means that it's less favorable. Yeah, it's not, it's not good. It's negative. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's what I just said. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But 72% of them like America. Right. My, my point is the majority, six, so that's almost 60% of Chinese people have an unfavorable opinion of China. Right, the right. Scale doesn't Exa change. Yeah, exactly, exactly, scale. exactly. So go back to the first slide. This is the most important thing. There's an asterisk here. Okay. This is my key takeaway here. Okay. Most Asian Americans view their ancestral homelands favorably, except Chinese Americans. Except Chinese Americans. So yeah. not only do Asian Americans on the whole not like China, mm -hmm. the majority of Chinese Americans do not like China. Yeah. And they are the only country of Chinese or of Asian Americans that view their own home country as unfavorable. Right, right. This flies in the face of every single piece of propaganda coming out of China. Correct. It's massively important. And we get to see this um, propaganda because our friends and you know people that we know in China are constantly calling us up and or sending us messages cuz they're worried about, oh, you know, you guys must be facing so much you know, to our wives and stuff, must be facing Correct. so much racism and, you know, you're being targeted for being shot and all this nonsense. Because that's what they're being told in all their WeChat groups and in the news and by the Chinese propaganda is that, you know, it's unsafe and Chinese people are always being chi food, you know, like um, picked Oh, on. no, just the Asians in Asians general. Asians in general, yeah. general, right? Well, I mean, if you look, if you actually ask Asian people that live here, not the Chinese government that's thousands of miles away, what they actually think. Correct. Well, now you know the results, that the Chinese... Americans and Asian Americans in general really like America and don't like China. Right. That's what you could take away from this. Yes. All right. So take your, your weird Harvard study that everyone keeps going on about and uh, think about that for a minute. Because here is what happens when you actually get to poll and ask people, you know, just in candidly country. in a free country. Imagine this. Just imagine for a minute you live in China, okay, and you live underneath the, the Communist Party of China and an official government organization comes to ask you, do you favor the Chinese government, yes or no? What the hell do you think you're going to say? What do you say? think you're going to say? It's not anonymous. No, it's never anonymous. Everything's tied to you. Of course you're going to say yes. Are you satisfied with the way that the government is governing you? Yes. Yeah. Everything you're going to say yes. You're not going to say no. If you say no... 
that's going to be a speed bump in your life. Yeah. You're going to have trouble. It could potentially <laughs> cause huge issues for you. It's basically a honey trap. It is. Yes. So, of course, everyone's going to say yes. Yeah. Okay, and that's just how it is. So that's why people like Hitler and Mussolini or whatever have like 100% approval, approval rating, ratings. They make the approval yeah, rating. Yeah, because guess what? If you said, I don't like Stalin, you'd get shot. Yes. You know, I don't like Mao. That's the end of you and your entire family. So you're going to say yes. So this is this is reality over here compared to absolute falsehoods that you get. Yeah, I thought that was really things. important. Yeah, it's important to talk about this stuff. Uh, what's going on here? Uh, this is, I believe some Colombian news. That's just <laughs> kind of funny. They uh, they mm -hmm. were doing a thing about the allies of Ukraine versus allies of Russia. Right. And they were showing the allies of Russia. You have uh, Lukashenko, you have Maduro and Raisi, and you have Xi Jinping. Yes. And the they put it with either picture that they chose for Xi Jinping is quite interesting. That's funny as all hell. That was yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. So is it time for the, the Drake no, stuff? No, there's, there's something else. <laughs> okay, what's uh, that? This is, uh, somebody took this in Taiwan. This mm -hmm. is a laundromat uh, called Jaunty, which I thought was oh, kind of Oh, it's kind of like Great. that Jaunty. I got gotcha. you. So Nice. Nice. That's it. That's a nice-ass laundromat. Yeah, definitely. Anyway, um, another word from another sponsor. We have two. Wait, I know we do, but like, when is the... The it's tofu coming, drink biblical stuff coming. Yeah, we have it's to coming. do the ads in the first half. Okay, hour. guys, bear bear with us because it is important that you listen to our sponsors because they keep us going. Yes. Right, and we, we really thank you for listening to this. So what do we got going? Today we're talking about uh, Athletic Greens and their product AG1. Yes. Uh, AG1 is something we literally take every day. I can vouch for this being a good product. Yes, absolutely. I think it's turned your whole vitamin and min minerals and immune My vitamin deficiency game. has now become a vitamin... What do you call surplus? surplus you have a bumper. A surplus. I've got a bumper, a bumper crop, crop, of bumper crop of vitamins, of, uh, vitamins and minerals. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Whether you say vitamin or vitamin, AG1 is fantastic because sure. all you do is you mix a scoop of this in some water, and you do it. I, I'd recommend doing it first thing in the day because you're going to get that feeling of do, you did something healthy for your body. Yeah. Instead of taking pounds of vitamins and like pills and freaking pounds of vegetables left and right, the average person isn't going to put that time, set the time out, and spend the money to do that. So taking AG1 every day is just a better option. It's a more convenient option. You know, like the travel packs are quite useful when yes. you're doing a bike trip or something because, yep. hey, you know, you're not going to take a bunch of pill bottles along with you. No. You get stopped at the airport and they'll ask you for like, what are you doing here? Smuggling <laughs> exactly, drugs? Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. Um, AG, AG1 was designed with uh, ease in mind so you can live a healthier and better life without having to do a lot. And again, this is okay to take and use. Uh, no matter what diet plan you follow. Sure. If you're a vegan, if you're keto or whatever, all of this stuff fits within that. You're not going to be like, there's not like meat floating around in there. <laughs> no. Anyway, <laughs> we love uh, AG1 and we love uh, Athletic Greens for sponsoring us. We yeah. really appreciate the company. We do uh, put our name behind the product. Yeah. Go to athleticgreens.com forward slash ADV. Get healthy and support the channel. Yes. If you're looking for an easier way to take supplements, Athletic Greens is also giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D. And five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash ADV. That's athleticgreens.com slash ADV. Check it out. Absolutely. Cool. Now can we get onto the biblical stuff? Um, I think so. Okay. I might, have, I might have put some more stuff in what's new. It was a very big media pack today. So. Oh, you I see. You scroll, can probably scroll through this. You sure? It's such a nice field. It is, actually. I'm having a nice time in this field. This where is Where is that? I believe it's... <laughs> I want to say Ukraine. Oh, interesting. Because I think I picked like Ukrainian field like, oh. when I did that, but actually I think it might be somewhere in America, actually. Okay. It really goes on, too. It's you know, it's really very long, yeah. I mean, the clip. I, it goes so long that it makes me thirsty for some AG1. <laughs> okay, excellent. It looks like it is time for yes. Soft Power Hour. This is where we talk about how China tries to change your mind. Now, this is super important, everyone. This is a typical example of soft power, and we're going to start out with this. Look at this beautiful flashy shamrock of a building over here yes it's almost irish it is quite irish it's anyway green, though. this is the green. yeah this is the very impressive shanghai Ex international exhibition center or whatever it does look it's cool called. yeah and expo and exhibition now this is where you see chinese propaganda versus reality like firsthand yeah Okay, because anyone who looks at this would be like, wow, look at that incredible building. Isn't that special? Like, it looks so advanced and high-tech and whatever. And that's because 
Why not? Let's build something big on an impressive scale because we've got the, the money to throw at it. We've got the manpower. We can do, do this all very quickly. Let's do it. That's what China does. They build big cities. They build big things. They don't need to get approval. They don't really need to survey the land properly or anything. They just do <laughs> oh, it. Dude, I'll tell you, yeah. there are some buildings that are absolutely sinking in Shanghai. Yeah. So um, now, right now, as we speak, is the Billy Billy World. Here's another impressive photo of the... Um, you know, again, exhibition, exhibition. And this is the kind of thing you see whenever you see propaganda about China. They show you these flashy buildings. They show yeah. you these like mega projects and stuff. And everyone's, everyone suddenly gets taken aback and says, wow, look at what China's building. And thinks it's incredible. They didn't do a good incredible. job of erasing that pollution in that photo. No, they didn't. Um, anyway, right now, I, for those of you who don't know, there's a thing called Comic Con. Yeah. Okay. Anyone who's into comics or anime or, you know, subculture stuff will know that right now in America, in Southern California, the San Diego Comic Con is currently on. I think it starts or may have already started, but it's supposed to run like this weekend, right? Mm -hmm. Well, for some unknown bizarre reason, China's version of Comic Con also is on right now. What is it called? It's called... Comic Con? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh, that's actually pretty good. Oh, that wasn't scripted. No, uh, yeah, so Comic Con, also known mm. as uh, Billy Billy Word. Sorry, Billy Billy World. World yeah. Um, no, I've seen people share know, it as hashtag a, that's Billy a whole, Billy Word. That's a whole other thing. Yeah. Anyway, Billy Billy World. Now, Billy Billy or Bijan is kind of like the YouTube of China in a way. Yeah, um, it's more complicated but, than that. But it's. It's more focused on like um, anime, anime animation, like you know, sort of that type of thing. Anyway, so they have their Billy Billy World, which is their version of Comic Con, which happens right now at the same time that Comic Con happens. Because I guess you know, yeah, well, they why can't go to that one? Yeah, right? I know, but I guess you know, if you're gonna copy stuff, you may as well copy it down to the T. Yeah, even the days, true. you know. True. Um, and that's being held right now in this big expo. So, I mean, it's impressive. I've seen some of the previous events. They set up big screens. They bring K-pop bands in and stuff to sing. They make it a big deal, right? Yeah. Let's see what's happening there right now. Hmm. The, hmm. Do you think they have like a water exhibit or something going on? Yeah, it must be just part of the asset. You know, it's probably that Snapchat filter that just makes everything mm, underwater. Maybe, yeah. maybe. Let's take a look. Hmm. Okay. Oh, oh, yikes. So can you see now this footage that oh. we're showing you? This is from that exhibition right now. Because of the rain in uh, Shanghai, you see the, the women walking around. You'll see some of them trying to do cosplay there. You see the cosplayers and stuff. Mm. They are knee deep in water because the drainage system is awful in Shanghai. And basically the sewer is backing up and the water's coming out through the manholes and, and whatnot. So... This is kind of, and you can see it's the same. You can see the logo. If you look on the, what do you yeah. call those things? Like the uh, safety ropes. safety rope thing. Yeah. You can see that's the banner of the exhibition center on there. So this fancy ass, however many billions of dollars it co- costs to build that fancy looking thing, it rains a little bit and it floods. So again, this is the whole point of Chinese propaganda. It can look good. It can look impressive, but it's not. Yeah. The most basic functions like being able to not flood when it rains, just, you know, are non-existent. I'm going to just throw another caveat in there. It looks all fun. Like, uh, you know, people see flooding on TV and be like, ah, just go out and have a swim. You literally can die from infection from what's in that water. Uh, Sure. It's very dangerous. Well, it's coming up from the sewers. Yeah. You don't don't... want to be in that water. Trust me on this. You absolutely do not want to be in that water. Yeah. So, again, it's like most of these impressive looking things that come out of China. Look at the flashy EV cars and stuff that you see, like the latest models that come out. They look flashy. They look really nice, but then they have massive safety issues. Like I've, I've covered recently, like the, the flagship BYD Han, which is um, like a kind of a sports sedan type thing, Mm. I guess. Um, I've got footage of one that was in a very bad impact front and rear and the airbags didn't go off. Yeah. You know, this is a similar type of thing. You know, they catch fire and so on. This is a fancy, very impressive looking building, but... International. Yeah. And the drainage can't even handle a bit of rain. No. Okay. Raw Um, raw ass sewage just popping through. Yeah, I know. So this is a perfect example of soft power. But look, let's look. Shanghai is currently experiencing a lot of rain. More more like hard infection (laughs) after that. (laughs) Yeah. Shit, you do not want to be in that. Yeah. 
So this is a big issue in China is the drainage of the cities. Poor Ferrari. I know, isn't it just wow. so? Wow. It's like a half million dollar car underwater. So. Yeah. This is on the highway. Yeah. Okay. So the highway's gone drain. Shanghai, more Look, like Shanghai. Yeah, exactly. I mean, can you just, everybody pay attention. This is a raised highway. Yeah. Okay, so this is a highway that's above oh, So this ground. is holding water. Yes, and Jeez. the water can't even drain off of a raised highway. I mean, you... If it was like down in the water table or something, yeah. But yeah, look. yeah, for sure. But this can't support that weight. No, There's it's gonna bad. be collapses like every time. I mean, there are collapses. There is a lot of damage. Yeah. And um, the structural integrity gets damaged too. Yeah. It's not just this though. Like this is just this has been coming out right now, but mm -hmm. we've got a lot of stuff that's been being affected. It's very. This, this is happening right now. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. is like there's apocalyptic stuff going down. Yeah. I mean, as in today. Yeah, as in today. Yeah. You know, these are the streets of Shanghai. Yeah, more like Xiaobai. Yeah. Xiaohai. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, exactly. Because Shanghai means like on the sea. Uh, yeah, Xia's like, Xia is like under so. the sea. Yeah. Take a look here. You can see the fancy malls and the fancy everything that they've oh, got there. Oh, I missed there. that on the Billy Billy world. The, the joke at the bottom of that Douyin clip. Yeah. It said, uh, come to the Billy... Billy Billy world to see that oh shit <laughs> yes exactly it's got a very romantic feeling yeah there. yeah um, yeah the drainage is a is appalling always I've always said this the most lightest mist in the northern city I lived in Bauto mm -hmm. the whole streets have fled now this is very relevant to what we're going to talk about later on this is an underground yeah. tunnel obviously mm -hmm. the guy stopped I would not go into that no if I were him, I'd be trying to find a way to back out of there. <laughs> this water park looks sick. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, so, yeah. So, here's the uh, maglev train. Yeah, moving on. Yeah. This is also in Shanghai. Yes. This is, uh, I just thought this is kind of funny, because it's one of those things, like, we have maglev at home yeah. jokes. Because yes. maglev trains, of course, were popularized in China, especially in Shanghai, right? Yeah. But were not originally from there. They claim that they were invented in China. Do they? Yeah, absolutely. Maglev's? The first maglev train is is always quoted to be the Shanghai maglev train. No. That's... Yes, that's what China China always says. Are you kidding me? Oh, I was wasn't aware of yeah. that. Yeah. So anyway, mm -hmm. um, their famous maglev train. There was a photo that was leaked of what the cockpit looks yeah, like. Yeah. So so where the actual um, you know operator sits. Yeah, yeah, he sits or whatever in. It's called. Yeah, the operator sits operator. in the front. The the cockpit, I suppose you could call it. <laughs> it's so. Let's, what does it look like? Let's it's, see. Just take a wild guess. <laughs> <laughs> wow what's there, what are some eye spy details here okay the standing fan that yeah. you've got up there yeah the uh power strip that runs the instruments and so i mean look at that just over there regular household you know like extension cord and the fact that the the chair over here is just a freestanding oh by the way sorry i'm i'm aware that it's invented in first used in germany i'm saying yes. what china claims yeah, all yeah, the time. yeah, anyway, yeah obviously um but take a look at how it you know when i first saw this i thought it was like a simulator so did i you know it's like hey this is where we train the operators how to right. use it but no that is the actual cockpit oh, I, there's another photo after this guess, yeah and yeah. you can see the number two up there yeah. um and yeah it it looks looks like a utility closet i really love the power outlet thing on the ground yeah like the extension Here's with the actual in, operator in, in it. Use. See, and this is train three. Yeah. See the three at the top? So it shows you it's a different one. <laughs> Same deal. A standing fan connected to a freaking like wall socket extension. Yeah, yeah. Um, what on earth is going on here, China? This is Shanghai, remember? Yeah. And it's important because Shanghai comes up quite a lot in this episode. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. This is China's most sophisticated city is Shanghai. Yeah. This is, however, not Shanghai. Okay, but this is a high-speed rail um, station that's also flooded. This is just to hammer home the fact that drainage is a huge problem always, in China. Always, always. This is thousands of kilometers away. Yeah, now this is in southern China. In I used Zhuhai. to go here all the time. This is the Zhuhai International Airport. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's like a water park. Yeah. It really does look like a water park. Yeah. I mean, imagine you go to show up for your plane, and yeah. that's what you're greeted with, you know? Yeah, and you get flooded out. Now, listen, I actually experienced this, so did you. Mm. In Shenzhen, mm. when it was uh, summertime and it would rain heavily, it would just, the streets would literally just flood. Yep. I'd sometimes be stuck on buses and the buses would have to stop because it actually went too high and we'd have to like wade out of them and stuff. You know, it's crazy. Yeah, I know. My mom was shocked when she was visiting because she was like, what's going on? Because it wasn't that much rain and the whole streets were just 
up yeah. to here and I, I always say this but there was this rat shivering on an e-bike <laughs> yeah like <laughs> and yeah, she's, that up. was her memory oh yeah the, the <laughs> shivering like rat horrible yeah Blood. drainage is a huge issue huge. in chinese cities because um, they're not properly planned no uh, and they just kind of you know they throw a bunch of concrete on top of the ground you know speaking of concrete is this what you want to see when you're in a basement car park and this is a supporting pillar of the entire building that's probably 30 floors up is this what you want to see? <laughs> this is, again, what's called tofu drag or tofu slag construction, where just the cheapest material is used. And we've seen this in real life. Yeah. You know. uh, I thought we'd, uh, on the water, this this is actually unrelated to Shanghai or anything. Yeah. This, this is a different clip from a different city, yeah. completely somewhere else. But imagine you came into your apartment yeah. after work, and you're just like, hey, what's going on? There's a little bit of water going on here. Let's try and uh, see what's going on. You know, hmm. Where's this coming from? Oh, oh just just the elevator. You oh, know it's what I mean? just pouring out of the elevator. Just pouring out That's of the elevator. Fine. Yeah. That's. I wonder if my apartment's okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I wonder if my dog is doing fine. He must yeah. have missed me all day. Yeah. Uh, this obviously is a burst water pipe. Yeah. Um, and this also is all part of tofu drag uh, yep. construction. You know, it's like the the fit the fittings aren't very good. They're not properly installed. Yeah, these are new buildings. Yeah, those. these are brand new. Usually happens in new stuff, which is yeah. the craziest thing. Yeah. Here, uh, where was the Suzhou? Suzhou. Suzhou. This is like a three million dollar apartment. Yeah, three million dollar apartment. Unit. Yeah. And uh, well, hey, you get your own water park inside. That's pretty sick i mean that's yeah. rich living <laughs> yeah imagine what kind of stuff a three million dollar apartment owner has in their apartment i mean they'll have like artifacts and shit yeah exactly they'll have like million dollar paintings yeah well let's downgrade a bit to a two million us dollar sure. apartment sure. okay over here this is in beijing and uh the worst part about this is that this isn't water it's sewage this is raw ass <laughs> poop water yeah yeah so i mean Picture this: you you pay two million US dollars for your apartment in okay? a polluted city. Yeah, and this is like Wanda, you know, one of the very well known, very good real estate so called, yeah. um, you know, companies in China. Yeah. You buy this, you move in, you're a rich dude. Yeah. And by the way, that two million US dollars only gets you a seventy year lease. Um, you don't actually own the property; no, you're just no, leasing no. it from the government for two million dollars. Uh, yeah, for two million dollars US dollars. Yeah, US yeah. dollars. Yeah. yeah. And then raw sewage just pours all over your possessions in your entire house. Yeah. Tofu dregs. They, they, it says they initially thought it was water, but then they smelled yeah. it. it How smelled chill. stinky. Yeah, exactly. So were... Yeah. That is disgusting. You got $2 million down the drain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. In a polluted ass city. Yeah. Um, Speaking of tofu drag construction. Yeah. Well, I mean, sometimes as it's being constructed, you can actually see how things just don't work out. It's better than after. But to be fair, like this kind of shows you the chabudo, like lazy bullshit cost cutting methods used. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When building things in China. Yeah. You see, the problem is corners are always cut. And this is something that uh, inevitably comes to bite people in the ass. Like we've seen. The buildings can look really nice and flashy, okay? But then, because corners are cut, things like sewage pipes break, yeah. okay? Yeah. Look at that uh, Shanghai Exhibition Hall. If it was properly built, the drainage would have been built properly too. Yeah. We yeah. wouldn't be flooding all the cosplayers with, like, no. sewer water. No. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> I mean... And I was just going to make some more let's jokes. Ju let's just throw terrible. in a fire as well, because you know what? we've That looks like a government building. Mm -hmm. It certainly does. But I think it's, it's a, I think it's a building. China Telecom. It's yeah. Look, it's China tel Telecom. Yeah. See, yeah. it's China Telecom building catching on fire. And that's another problem with tofu drag construction is that the fire systems don't work very well, as I spoke about a couple of episodes ago. Yeah. Um, and speaking of drainage, okay. What we have here, can you see over there is a viaduct, the bridge. Yeah. That's going to be a highway up there. Uh -huh. And there's a drainage pipe. Yeah. Okay. But even they just don't work. This particular drainage pipe fell off into someone's car, almost impaled them. Luckily, they survived. But I mean, isn't that scary? Yes. You so imagine, they did not get impaled. Yeah. Imagine you're driving. Yeah. They, he's having a conversation with the cop saying, like, hey, listen, yeah, you I'm know, all right. my, my sunroof just is shattered and this <laughs> yeah. thing is probably sticking, <laughs> sticking through my leg, but whatever. Yeah. Um, here's the thing, though. Um, that's scary. Yeah. He could have died. 
And this this is where it starts to take a bit of a darker turn because you know we can have a good laugh at like sure. you know water flooding in or sewage or whatever uh, you know, but when people's lives are at risk and it's completely beyond your control. I mean, you could be the safest driver in the world. You could be going like three miles an hour, and suddenly a drainage pipe falls in through your sunroof. You've got no control over that. No, and that's where it becomes dangerous. Just not that long ago, I think it was last a few weeks ago, a, a huge piece of the highway in Guizhou Province, a new piece of highway, just collapsed in, into the ground. Yeah, and that's the thing is that these like spaghetti highways and these high speed rails and all these infrastructure things we're showing you, these flashy things that end up in propaganda, are being built at such an alarming rate to fulfill video roles, yes. to fulfill propaganda to be put on TikTok for you to see. Oh yeah, as a person of the world to say, wow, look at China so far ahead. That stuff doesn't work and is breaking at a more alarming rate than the old stuff, even from like the 80s and 90s. That's the crazy thing. And I often have these stupid waste of time Twitter debates with uh, Chinese propagandists because they'll post those yeah. intricate, you know, intersection looks like a spaghetti junction thing. And they'll be like, look how far ahead China is while the West is like rotting and, yeah. you know, stagnating and all that. Look at this. And I'm thinking to myself, what's the point of showing a spaghetti junction in the middle of nowhere that no one's going to use. Yeah. It doesn't really yeah. help the farmer that lives no. next door to wherever it is. It just impedes and, the sunlight on yeah, his crops. And <laughs> all, it, all it is is something that's been thrown up quickly that isn't going to last. Yes. And like you said, the stuff that China built in the 80s and 90s lasts longer than the stuff it's they're sad. building now. It's, yeah. it, and that's bad quality already. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, listen, it's weird. It's the only country in the world where I'd say... The new stuff is worse than stuff 10 years ago. Yeah. It's like crazy. I'm not talking about, yeah, like back in World War II, we had stronger stuff. I understand that. Sure. But I'm talking about new construction versus 10, 20 years ago. Mm. The new stuff is Im infinitely worse. Yeah, it is. Because they're just pumping it out. Yeah, anyway. the roads. Yeah, take right? a look. The roads just kind of collapse. At the same time, you probably shouldn't be carrying like 20 I mean, that's million an overloaded truck. metric tons of yeah. coal or whatever on a pedestrian you know what happens? road. These trucks, I used to live in a coal town. So like these trucks, what they'll do is they'll bribe the weight officials. Yes. Because you're supposed to pull into these things and they'll actually just pay them in cigarette cartons. Yeah. Um, usually cigarette cartons, what I said. They would literally hand some cigarette cartons out the window and yeah. the cops would wave them on. I was like, what country am I living in? Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> this is what happens. But they don't plan the roads. So you'll have these fresh new roads. And you're like, damn, I wish, you know, he, he, I shouldn't say... You know, it's too bad. But, like, there's some potholed rolls here in PA. And when we go over them, yeah. we're like, you know, this kind of sucks. But... Yeah, like, where is my tax money going? Yeah. But in China, you'll have this freshly new paved road, and it's built on hollow ground. Yeah, it's you not... Know? They don't do... They don't survey. Take a look here. I like the fact that this thing is a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's literally it self-fulfilling. It yeah, it, like, f falls through the ground, but then it fills it up with its payload. Let's go back to that particular one, because it's kind of funny. I love that one, because it literally is yeah. giving back to the earth. Yeah, exactly. It's like, what have you taken from me? I will give back. Mm -hmm. here's, here's something I see a lot of um, discussion about, is the people... <laughs> Satisfying. Yeah, exactly. It's very satisfying. When people talk of, try to compare China and the West, one of the big things that says China can get things done fast. Yes. They don't need to worry about passing all these regulations and bills and stuff. They can just no. do it. They can do it, yeah. Well, I mean, there there's a lot to criticize about the way things happen in the West, okay? There are things that need to change. It's not perfect. There's a lot of rubbish going on. But there's a reason why things take so many processes. You need safety inspections, okay? You need to get someone to come and sign off on that. Surveyors. And, yeah, the surveyor has to do it, then the safety inspector, then the whatever. Then they get the contracting company and they put out tenders. Someone wins. Somebody does it, blah, blah, blah. There's you a lot of geologists involved yeah. to make sure bedrock is solid. Yeah, you know? there's a lot that goes into it. So yeah. yeah, it'll take like, say, 10 years to build a new road or fix a new road. And China can do it in a year. But this is the result. It's because you don't have all those steps. So many corners are cut. You technically do. Yeah, but, but they, they just the drive it away. The country is into the core with corruption at yeah. every level. Yeah. Corruption is how China works. Yeah. I mean, that's got to... <laughs> Maybe I should uh, get, get us, us out, out of there, there so, so people can see, can see this. Yeah. You got to see that manhole. Yeah, I'll, I'll get us out of here so you can see the... Uh... Imagine you're driving down the road and all of a sudden uh, a sewage explodes in your car. I think that'd be quite the surprise, wouldn't you? It would. In China, <laughs> sometimes the roads eat you, and then yeah. sometimes they spit you out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, they've, man. Had, they've had too much. <laughs> and that manhole cover would have to have to land on the guy's poor car, you well, know, at least it and didn't the grill. Hit the person. Yeah, that's true. But you know what it's like when you got a nice new car, and it's true. 
you know, you're just driving down the road and a sewage manhole cover explodes. I know. I, I literally hate when that happens to me all the time. And it's always like landing always on you. Always happens to me. Yeah. Horrible. Don't those weigh like a hundred pounds? They're incredibly <laughs> heavy. Yeah. So there's going to be a lot of damage to that car. What? Yeah. So what's... what's... Sewage geyser. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's a lot of sewage. It's old faithful, but except Chinese version. Um, Sinkhole's massive problem in China. Yeah. We've covered this before. But what, what the thing is... They don't survey the land properly, so they'll build things over unstable ground. Yes. Right? And this is what happens. Like, you will get eaten by roads in China. Yeah, it's terrifying yeah. because if you're driving over that, your uh, vehicle just disappears into that. This is brand... I mean, this is just last month. This Chongqing. is in Chongqing. This mm. is a whole new built area. Yeah. Brand new built area that China's showing off all the time on these propaganda ads. They've, oh, yeah. I feel like they have dumped billions of dollars into the promotion of Chongqing. Turn on, just just go on Twitter and yeah. Instagram, and all you will see is Chongqing this, Chongqing that. TikTok, look, they, huge. They TikTok. build a, this on top of a building. Oh, look at yeah. this a gas station on top of a building. Chongqing mega city. Chongqing is the future. Chongqing is the this is three thousand years ahead of China. This is Chongqing. I mean, three thousand years ahead of the West. Yeah. I mean, this it's it's crumbling. Like the yes. new infrastructure in these places that are built for promotion, mm. that are built for eyes to see, yeah. are crumbling. Yeah. This we showed before. This is like... Yeah, just a throwback. Like just a day after they'd uh, opened up that undersea tunnel. Um, yeah. And look, it was leaking. And that's not what you want to see. No. Tunnels and water in China are a very bad combination, as you'll find out later, because we've got some something to yeah. follow up on. Unfortunately. Yeah. But it's, it's kind of crazy. So, yeah, I just wouldn't be driving in there if I were them. That's yeah. under the sea. Yeah, Little Mermaid style. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, come on. Come on. Let's get through this. Come on. Mm -hmm. Good thing they did get through this. Yeah, I would have just gotten the hell out of this. <laughs> this is in your hometown. Oh, yeah, good old Shenzhen. It's actually not far from where mm -hmm. you lived. Mm -hmm. um, that is just another explode, exploding sewer manhole covers. Yeah, I mean, look, I, uh, I, I had situations where I would be going through this kind of thing on yeah. bikes and so yeah, on. It's same. kind of crazy. And uh, why on earth do you have a rat on the oh, subway? Just because you know what? Pause what? that. It, it, the subway is infrastructure, right? Yes. And of course, you might get rats because there's a lot of rats in China, dude. Oh, yeah. And they get mad. So that's a tiny one. But yeah. you, I just wanted to have a little bit of humor before it gets mad dark. Okay. Because this guy's a legend. <laughs> he just, he's just like, okay, gotcha. And he's just chilling on his phone. He's he doesn't like, care. He's, he's just, <laughs> just, yeah. That guy's a chat. Yeah, he is. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Yeah, this gets pretty dark. So this, not this particular no, 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 clip, but no. this just happened a couple days ago. Well, you can see the date down there, yeah. right? 2023, yeah. 07, 19. So we're literally talking about two days ago. Yeah. Okay. Um, one thing about the tofu dreg kind of, uh, what can we call it? Culture in China is that it spreads everywhere. Okay. So not only are shortcuts taken when buildings are built. Uh -huh. Okay. Because look, we could show you all the, the cladding falling off buildings and we've shown you a bit of the concrete and stuff. Uh, but it it permeates everything: electrical connections, yes. gas connections, water connections. Yeah, such as construction. Yeah, no, it's bad. Yeah, uh, I can give a, a perfect oh, yeah. example because yeah. my wife owns an apartment in China, and when it was newly finished, the the guy came in, the electrician, who's basically just the <laughs> hardware shop shufu or whatever shufu, and he comes up there shufu shufu yeah the, the comfortable yeah the yeah, yeah, it's very, come on, <laughs> yeah okay come on. all right okay why don't know why that's in my mind for some reason <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's what you wanted to think of. anyway so um let's get back to that so the guy comes up and he does the you know puts in the the breaker box and all that yeah. kind of stuff and you know what have you and i happen to be there because She'd just taken ownership of the apartment, okay? So we're just checking it out. We're staying there for the first, like, weekend or whatever. And there's this, like, and smell coming out of the breaker box. Open it up and some fire. Yeah. And I called the guy up. And I'm like, what the hell's going on here? And he'd used, like, very low rating, very cheap, absolute garbage breakers, which is not meant for that amount of yeah. amperage, you know? And they caught fire. And if I wasn't in the building at that time, happened to be in there where I could go in there and like in an emergency smack everything off, turn off the power, um, you know, there could have been a massive fire. And that's just how it goes. Like the, all these shortcuts that are taken. So you remember we went up on the building of where I was living and it, it already burned out. Yeah. It was completely burned out. We like looked at, we're like, what is, what is this? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So this also goes for like gas connections, as yeah. we're going to see here, because take a look behind us. This is a, a row of shops. Now, you get this pretty much every residential building area. You'll see behind there are all the buildings. 
This is a and very then, China scene. Yeah, and then you get the shops over here, right? You always have the garbage in front of the shops. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It just gas explosion. Yeah. Again, super lucky that no one was in there at the time. This happens a lot, these kerosene gas explosions. Mm. Hugely common in China. Yeah, but I mean, Do look, you look at the buildings across Holy the way. Their, their windows all shattered. And uh, if you look at some of the destruction here of the cars that were nearby, you know, again, just lucky that people weren't like yeah. standing there and it happened like early in the morning. Obviously someone's, you know, dash cam caught that. But imagine if it was during the day and you got yeah. kids running around yeah, dude. and people over there. It's like, it's absolutely terrifying. You, you, you know, like being away from China for a few years at least, you don't forget this stuff, but it takes, you have to jog your memory. You're like, wait a minute, that that is how it was. Yeah. <laughs> like, it is yeah. crazy. Yeah, you know, the thing is with the uh, uh, lack of building standards, I mean, they have them on paper, like you said, but the, the enforcement is yes. so you know, corrupt and lax. It, yeah. This kind of thing happens a lot. It's unfortunate, you know? You know, the thing is, like, I, I want to throw these in here. Do you remember this? During zero COVID, they were bragging to the rest of the world about how they built hundreds of thousands of these quarantine capsules, right? Yes. And they built them at an unprecedented rate. And then all of a sudden, they pull the plug on their zero COVID policy. Yeah. Because they're like, wait a minute, the whole world's kind of over this thing. Yeah. And th these things are just left to rot. Yes. These capsules, are. these hundreds of thousands of capsules mm -hmm. that they lined highways with, that they built cities out of. Yeah. Were never put into use. And they bragged about how much, you know, how much uh, capacity they had to basically lock people up when they got COVID. We're talking about how much CO2 was emitted. Oh, yeah. How much Just waste materials and look pollution. Look at the crap that this stuff is built out of. It's like yeah. whatever, some kind of plastic composite stuff. So you yeah. would have had a lot of... Pig iron. You know, yeah, there have been a ton of chemical waste and, um, you know, like uh, pollution created. Yeah. Just putting this shit together. And that's that's what I, I... The reason I want to throw that in there is that's where China's focus is, is to build a lot of shit very fast. Yes. And just to, you know, whatever you might perceive as impressive, it's to impress people. That's it's the only reason. To it's attract not, investment. And it's not practical. All of that stuff's gone to waste. I've seen yeah. footage of a lot of them just run down, overgrown with plants now. And just... No, because they're not being used. And of course, they dismantled a whole bunch of them. But then now you're creating more CO2 yeah. emissions by coming in and bringing the bulldozers, trashing everything, then all that waste. Where does all that shit go? You know, it ends yeah. up in the ocean or in the in the atmosphere. It's just ridiculous. Look at the yeah. background up there and you can just kind of see. I mean, that's what that's making. The, yeah. the construction of that makes that air quality. Yeah. So now we've got to bring you back to something that happened two years ago. Yes. Okay. Now we covered this on the show, but uh, in Hunan, there was that Awful, awful flooding. This is not a recap. This is new news. It's new news. This is probably the most important thing in this episode. Yeah. So we had this... Ma uh, maybe you can explain the, the area that this, this flood kind so of encompassed. Look at the, look at this sheet in the map. It yeah. shows you how big this flood was, right? Mm. This flood in 2021 affected about 14 million people. Okay? Yes. And the, the area that it covered, it was in Henan. So think of provinces, Chinese provinces like states in yeah. America, right? Mm -hmm. It covered a state or a province of Henan. It went into Shandong, all the way yeah. in the northeast. It went into Hubei, right? Mm -hmm. It went into Hebei. Yeah. This whole area, it went into parts of Shanxi. Mm -hmm. This flood like was covered incredible. States. Yeah. Yeah, it was absolutely incredible. It was so c catastrophic, and it was so heartbreaking for a lot of people because so many lives were lost. Yeah, but so guess how many... What is the official... By the way, the the government admitted that they lied about the deaths, right? So what? Yeah. So so okay. What were they claiming? You, you look at a you look at a flood like this, right? Sure. And 1.4 million people had to be evacuated. So if you think about just percentage wise, there's gonna be there's gonna be a lot of dead people, sure. right? 14 million people totally affected, right? Yeah. The government finally came out and said because of the faults of the local government wait wait what was their initial that's what i'm trying to say okay because of the faults of the local governments mm -hmm. that initially reported that 139 people died hmm. they need to apologize some people need to go you know get okay so their jobs. are they going to be honest now they're going to give us yeah, a real gonna, the real number okay yeah. what's this real number so after an investigation from yes. the ccp yes from mm -hmm. the chinese government uh you expect that number to jump quite a bit because of the sheer Cat catastrophe that happened. Yes, yes. The total death count was up to from 139 mm -hmm. to 398. 
And are you ready to see why this is so so insulting yeah. and so evil? Yeah. Let's have course. a look. All right. So we covered this quite extensively. This tunnel. This is just up. one tunnel. Yeah. Now, this tunnel filled up in five minutes. Yes. Okay. Now you can see it's a, it's a six lane. Okay. There's three lanes one way, three lanes the yeah. other way. Okay. There's six lanes going there. Four kilometers long. When it filled up, the exit point had been blocked on the other side. So the cars backed up bumper to bumper. So you've got four kilometers worth of cars all standing still. So it was full. Yes. The and tunnel was full. We showed you video footage of, remember, someone was running to the people that were waiting to get yeah. into the tunnel. Yeah. And just at the entrance of the tunnel, because it was bumper to bumper the whole way, somebody running and knocking on their car doors and windows saying, get out, Don't, it's not, your car's not worth your life. Remember that? Yes. So that's proof that it was bumper to bumper from the beginning to the end, at least right. in the one side. The other side, we don't know how many sure. were in there. So that's four kilometers of three lanes. Back to bumper back to bumper. Bumper to bumper, okay? Right. And every single person in that tunnel would have died. Yes, because it filled up within five minutes. Right. So first of all, people were reluctant to get out of their cars, even the ones that were at the entrance. Remember the guys trying to get them out? Nobody yes. wanted to leave their cars. Even if you did try to get out of your car, if you were just, I don't know, 100 meters in, First of all, when there's water surrounding your car, it's difficult to open uh, the doors. Okay, we all know that. It's terrible. Um, it creates like a pressure differential and you can't open the doors. It's too difficult. You have to climb out the windows. But if it gets to the windows, you're kind of screwed, you know? So first of all, getting out of your car is almost impossible. But if you're in the middle of that tunnel... It is impossible. Yeah. yeah. You, there's no way that you can run or walk two kilometers either way in five minutes, because it filled up to the roof. In other yeah, words- you're walking in water. Yeah, to the roof. In other words, completely filled up within five minutes. So nobody had any warning. No. They're in the tunnel, they're sitting there in like bumper to bumper traffic, four waiting kilometers for long, yeah. waiting for it to open on the other side. And it suddenly just within five minutes is filled to the top. Thousands of cars. So we did the, some math. This is the most ridiculous, no, let's keep you it wanna, there. Just okay. for this part first. Okay, all right. Just from this idea alone, yeah. If you do the math, let's pretend like it's not six lanes. Like you said, there's it's, only let's just say there's only three lanes. Okay, full. only so we'll go like the bare minimum here. Because we know three lanes were full. Absolutely. If you look at the footage um, of the guy trying to get people out of their car, they were going into the tunnel and they were backed out of the tunnel because it was bumper to bumper yeah. the whole way in. China doesn't want you to see how many cars were inside there, but we'll, yeah. we'll, well have we a look have at a, that little a little bit of insight. Bit. Yeah. If you look on the other side of the highway here. Right. Yeah. Let's just pretend for some godforsaken reason that no one was on the other side of that tunnel. Yeah, I mean, this okay. is days later. They'd already cleared yeah. away a bunch of cars. But let's just pretend. Okay. It's just so we're like the most conservative okay. estimate ever. Right. Right. So if three lanes were full, we did some math. If you look at this, right, mm -hmm. you would have had uh, four kilometers of cars. Yes. Right? Average cars, how how long? Like it's like fourteen, basically fourteen point seven feet. feet. It's fifteen feet there and about. Okay. Right? That means there was eight hundred and seventy four cars on average in each lane. Okay. Right? Each lane, right? So there's three lanes because we're, we're not even counting six, even though there were definitely people on the other side. Yeah, oh yeah, we're just yeah. being conservative. Three uh, three times that, right? So at a fantastical minimum, yes, there was two thousand six hundred and twenty two cars. And many of these cars are going to have more than one person. In it. Uh, absolutely. Let's just be very, very conservative and say the average car had two people in it. Okay, that's okay. the lowest minimum we because, can say. Yeah, some of these are vans with eight people in them. Yeah, right? of course. Taxis, you see taxis there? Yes. Obviously, you're going to have like three passengers in the back, two passengers in the back. Yes. At a fantastical minimum, yes. just this tunnel accident yes. would be at minimum 5,244 people dead. The minimum. The bare minimum. Yet... The Chinese government, after an investigation, mm -hmm. says the entire flood, including all those different provinces and states, all of those hundreds of kilometers mm. that were underwater, almost 2 million people evacuated. Yeah. There was only 398 people died. In the entire flood. In the whole flood. Not just the tunnel. Yeah. Because right? the tunnel itself is thousands of people absolutely guaranteed. And you know how we can tell? This is a little memorial of people who lost their loved ones in that tunnel and in the city coming to put down their flowers. This is a two-year anniversary. Yeah. Look at... Well, this is outside the subway. Yes. How many uh, bouquets of flowers do you see there? Not 398. If you were to count... The, and, and keep in mind, not everyone's going to go memorialize. Yeah. And you know what? Guess what? They keep getting rid of these and, and hiding do. this. They actually they don't put want up people barriers. To see. Yeah. They don't want people to them. see. Yeah. 
People are putting bouquets of flowers for their dead loved ones. Now, um, here's some footage, um, allegedly, of the cars that they pulled out of the tunnel. This is where it gets grim. Because, you know, they obviously had to pull all the cars off out of the tunnel and go stick them in a field somewhere, okay? And um, just from these pictures, which you cannot see all of them, uh, how much they should we work do out? I not want you to see this, by no, the way. No, no. This is forbidden. If you go back to that first picture. Yeah, I'll go back to the first This picture. one has the most, like, the most real estate that we can see. This one, yeah. Yeah, so we did some very basic math. Yeah, we kind of did a, a kind of a basic count of how because, many. Yeah, because, look, there are so many, probably so many rows of cars that are not even in this shot. So yeah. we only covered what is in this shot, sure, technically. Sure, sure. If you do a very rudimentary calculation, right, mm -hmm. it looks like there's about 11 visible rows of cars right yep. there. Average two people per car, right? Yeah. Um, are you doing ads again, guys? YouTube? Did it do ads? I think it did. Okay, so if you do, um, I just hopefully it didn't. Uh, if you do the math here, mm -hmm. you have 11 visible rows, two people per car, right? That checks out to be about 5,720 people at the very least. By the way, with that wildly conservative estimate is very similar to the number we came up with just based on the math of the tunnel. Yeah. Right? That's just in one picture. Yeah. From one tunnel accident. Many things flooded. Like you said, the subways yeah. flooded. People died. Like, the underground's flooded. Countless people died in the mm. subways because we've got all those live streams of people running out of air yes um and being stuck in the it's subway so tunnel. It's scary terrible um so we know that there was a lot of death in the subways so bringing this back mm -hmm. at the most bare minimum just this one tunnel had at least five thousand people die at, yeah. at the i mean we let's let's be honest if we we're not we don't have to uh pretend no it's probably closer to over ten thousand people oh, yeah. in this one accident yeah right and just in that in the city yeah. think about the subways were flooded um the the roads were flooded anyone that was in a vulnerable place or you know maybe just walking on the streets and you know happened to be in an area where it suddenly filled up with water down in a mall area yeah. or something there was a lot of deaths yes it's crazy how many people in this one city in this one city. So so listen, to go back to this, the CCP is claiming that 398 people died of the entire atrocity, the yes. entire flood. And yes. now we're looking at the reality of the situation from these leaked images yeah. of cars that are being pulled and at the most disgustingly bare wild minimum, we're talking about 5,000 people in this one accident. Yes. Never mind you, the whole province. Never mind the whole province, right? Never mind the whole yeah. city of Zhengzhou that was underwater. Well, again, this is how China does it. Look at the COVID deaths. Yeah. Uncountable people died of COVID. Yeah. With the crema the cremations alone, the data coming out of the crematoriums was outlandish, like out they of this world. They had to stop it. Yeah, they've actually stopped that data now. But just they deleted like, it. how does it all of a sudden, like, here's the, an average amount of cremations, and then the next day it's 24 7, like so many hundreds of thousands of people being cremated all the time. And then they said, like, oh, the whole the whole of COVID, only like 5,000 people died or yes. whatever that stupid number. Yeah. And for the longest time, they were claiming a couple of hundred or something. Yeah. I don't know. The, uh, the yeah. People's Republic of China, the, the country that everyone keeps using to say, look, at they really care about their people. The country that censors flowers yep. and then under reports by a magnitude of at least 10, yes. if not 100, mm -hmm. when atrocities happen. Yeah. They don't care about their people. People are statistics and ants to the Chinese government. Yep. They are absolutely meaningless. In fact, they are a burden and a hindrance. Because you know what happened here. They initially blamed the Zhengzhou government. Yep. And they said, oh, you guys underreported. After investigation, we found it was actually 398. And then they threw some officials under the bus. Yep. Because the CCP is never wrong. And why do you think the Zhengzhou officials in this city where this happened, why do you think they underreported? It's because if they actually reported honestly, they would lose their jobs because they told the truth. Yes. That's how the Chinese government works, unfortunately. Yes. You want to invest in this country. You want this country to be part of your global sphere and a global leader then be my guest but this is how they yeah. treat their own people. and they actively impeded any information about the, the the victims any information about the emergency what was going on yep. they you know they really yes. stood in the way they really stopped their lives could have been saved if they weren't trying to save their face yep you know what i mean yeah it's pretty disgusting and so this is this is the dark side of tofu drake because guys it's good and fun to laugh at the stupid little buildings falling down and the bits and pieces of, you know, like, oh, look, that wall's made out of sandpaper or whatever it is, or made out of sand. 
I should say, or styrofoam, which they do sometimes. Yep. We've saw, we yeah, saw exactly. In real life. Like, yep. don't forget, we lived there. We did this. We went and we saw, we touched, we filmed. Yes. Okay. But when it actually comes to affecting people's lives like this, that's when it stops being funny. And that's when it starts to become serious. And that's when, when you see these people putting out these like, oh, look at China, how impressive and all the mega structures come out. It's kind of, it kind of makes you angry. Yeah. How about focusing on building things well at a reasonable pace so that the people don't suffer? Nobody needs a fancy building. No. It's not going to help the, the local people. No. You know, all it is is for international image. You think you need a billion LED lights? Who's that helping? Yeah. No one. You think you need a flood of four kilometers of cars so that everyone dies and then you lie about it? No, you don't need that. That's you don't need sure. any. You don't need any of this shit. No, it's ridiculous. Of anyway, <laughs> that is about all we got to say about the tofu dreg main section of the show. So I hope you guys can walk away from that and understand a little bit more about why this tofu dreg thing is not just a meme. It's it's life and death. Yeah, yeah. You don't need chunks of your building falling down on your little kid no. or something. You no. know, and uh, it's it's a dangerous place to be, and that's the reason. It's because of corruption, and it doesn't need to be. No. You know, if things were done properly, it would be totally safe and fine. You know? Anyway, yeah. let us move on to Wumao Corner, guys. And this is where we talk about the haters. And this is very related. Very, very related to um, what we've been talking about with Tofu Dregs and stuff. Yeah. But, of course, right before we get into Wumao Corner, we have to remind you guys of something. We have a VIP show, and it was hilarious this Monday. Can we show everyone a little bit of it? We can. Can we? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> no way. Look at that. <laughs> this power <laughs> Tokyo look trip. at this power slide over here. It's just in <laughs> incredible. Like, let's tear him apart, okay? You're tearing me apart, Lisa. All righty, some kung fu. <laughs> Bullet. Yes. <laughs> yeah, look at that great CGI. Isn't what that is amazing? <laughs> that's too good that i mean that's too good sorry guys um, uh, double vision over here. double vision yeah so uh we covered revolutionary fantasies which uh is one of our favorite topics yeah you know that that even though it was it's unlisted it's a vip show so nobody can see it it got hit by like six different copyright claims <laughs> yeah. The Chinese uh, government doesn't want people seeing those no. ridiculous things. They try every way that they can to shut them down. It's funny. But yeah, yeah. anyway, those are dead serious. That's not yeah. a comedy show. Those yes. are dead serious clips from, from shows, propaganda shows that China airs every day yeah. uh, to the local people there in China. And what they want them to believe is that they won the war and they're the reason that the Japanese lost. Yeah, and like um, a Chinese peasant can kill troops yeah. and, and entire divisions of the Japanese army Absolutely. with like a rock or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if you want to see that and every other episode, I think we're on episode like 54 or something yeah, go of Xiaoban Ho, go to patreon.com slash ADV podcasts and uh, join the Xiaoban Ho tier. You're going to love it because it's every Monday live and yep. then you get all the backlog too of every other episode we've ever done. Correct. It's amazing. It's so much fun. Look, guys, if you have the means, we'd love to see you there on Mondays. Um, and uh, yeah, come and join us. It's so much fun. I will say it's the best way to support us as well. Absolutely. It's absolutely the best way to support us. It's the stuff we can't cover on YouTube. Yeah. So if Obviously. you catch my drift, you're probably going to want to go check that out. Sure. Your Tokyo drift, like that bicycle? My Tokyo drift, yes. Okay, so now we're going to get into the Walmart corner. Um, first, you know, when you're buying cheap goods from Timu, Temu, and all that kind of junk. Yeah, and all those. Or sh Shane, Shine. Shein or whatever. Shein, Some shit whatever. names. Whatever. I'll tell you, I, you know. We're suing each other right now, it's aren't like, they? Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> remember that what you're doing is you're supporting this kind of nonsense, you know, this kind of workplace abuse. And, um, you know, there's a lot of just horrible things going on. Chinese factory. Mm -hmm. it looks like a miner. Um, and yeah. I don't mean like mining for gold. I mean, like, I, I'm just like, like is buying your cheap thermos worth, you know, this? Yeah. Maybe it's time it's to cut this not. stuff off. Maybe it's just time to cut it off. Maybe don't buy cheap products from China because we've no, we've known for how many years now that there are massive labor, forced labor abuses there. Well, yeah. also think about this. The cheaper the product that you're buying, the more instances of this kind of crap's going on. Yes. Because the profit margins are zero. 
Okay, yeah. so they're going to have to force people to to or pay them almost nothing to do yeah. this work. Of course. So you're buying your like two dollar thing from Timu, and you're like, yeah, look or at this whatever. bargain. All the hosts of yeah, all these exactly. places. Exactly. Wherever. And whatever, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wish.com. All this. You're like, oh, look, I got this cool thing. It only cost me two dollars. Well, it's costing a lot of people a lot more than two dollars. Yeah. But if you buy a big, let's say you buy a DJI drone or something from China. They're making a profit, okay? The company can afford to pay their salaries of their yeah. staff. And, you know, that's the thing. I've worked, we worked with DJI yeah. before. I've worked with uh, Tencent and some of the bigger companies. And there's nothing wrong with them, yeah. like as far as companies are concerned. Sure, I mean, they've got wow. government connections yeah. and stuff. But yeah. what, I'm, what I'm saying and is labor this, abuses, the yeah. staff don't suffer. Yeah. The staff get real salaries. The staff actually get to have like end of year functions where they yeah. get like a, a a movie star or something. Or, or like in right. my in my case, I went to that one to Tencent and Wang Feng came and sang. Right. You know, my, my favorite uh, rock singer from China that right. you hate so much. <laughs> you know, probably because you, you just can't fade a gunga like that guy can. But I whatever. I think it's the most generic garbage <laughs> I've ever heard in my life. Anyway. But for China, it's not. No, it is. It <laughs> it's, is. It's not. Check it out. Wang Feng. Um, anyway. Wang Feng sucks. Oh, dude, I like so Wang Feng. So bad. So many better life. underground bands you mm. could you could follow. Anyway. Yeah, I'm whatever. sure. Yeah. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that the cheap shit, you're kind of, you. I hate to say it, and I don't want to put the guilt on anyone, but you're kind of complicit in a lot of crap if you're buying that cheap uh, shit. I mean, I you hate to say it, but it's true. Yeah. That's we we speak the truth. Yeah. <laughs> like it's, I, it might hurt. Yeah. True. Anyway, guys. Um. Now here we have uh, a metro in China, and this is a problem. By the way, you know Shenzhen? This isn't Shenzhen, but mm -hmm. in Shenzhen, one of the accolades for the city and that everybody who lives in Shenzhen is very proud of is the fact that Shenzhen's a polite Wenming mm. Chengshi. That's I know like Chengshi every other city, city whatever, Chengshi. but they actually take every it, city I've ever been to won the Wenming Chengshi Award. Yeah, but they actually take it seriously. Like oh. one of the things, hang oh, on, you got to hear it. Like, okay. Because I, not only was I told this by many people in Shenzhen, but you also see the adverts in everywhere on the billboards yeah. about this. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, I was very close friends with a reporter for a big newspaper. Yeah. And, um, you know, she was telling me about all this stuff and explaining how it's so. And everyone's very proud of it in Shenzhen. But the thing that they're proud of is that when an old person or like a pregnant woman or some something is in a bus or a train, people will stand up and give the seat to them. And that's what makes Shenzhen better than the other Chinese cities. No, seriously. But you think I'm even joking. Let's take a look at this uh, footage. You got like phone boys over there, healthy, oh, he healthy young people standing around. And there's a woman literally with crutches standing. A crippled there. woman. Okay. And then a woman with a tiny infant standing there. You know what I'm saying? Rather than, uh, you know, give up their seat. Where did it? It clips yeah. like somewhere in the middle. <clears throat> Rather than anyone being like, hey, listen, looks like you could use a seat. Sit yeah. down. They're like, nah. <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean but anyway props to shenzhen for actually being because i saw it myself a number of times it's not every time no but a number of times in shenzhen yeah. i obviously i would stand up but like i would see it in shenzhen and that's why i like shenzhen so much is like it was actually a civilized city uh -huh. you know what i mean that wenming Chengshu, <gasps> probably the only city in china i went to that actually could have that accolade. there's a lot of not wenming stuff in shenzhen i know but it's always the whitey rin bro Wow. <laughs> See? Wow. See? I pulled a China on you there. Anyway, um, this is incredibly uh, indicative of what we were talking about earlier and why China loves to build these mega projects. Okay. Sorry, just read it. <laughs> Someone messed with the name of the, the yeah, Twitter. Yeah, that's, that's maybe not his real name. Um, but this is a very well-known uh, <laughs> a very well-known propagandist, Tanky. Yeah. tanky. And this is the kind of shit they put out. Shanghai 2023 versus Detroit 2023. Your enemy isn't China. It's the elites at the head of the major corporations taking everything from you. <laughs> so for those of you who are listening, what this, this propagandist has post is like a beautiful night this shot. This is a new thing, isn't there? Yeah, they but, do yeah. this a lot, okay? They learn from Hua Chunying, like yes. the foreign ministry in China. Yeah, so they take a beautiful night shot of Shanghai's skyline, right? Yeah. At night with all the lights on and it looks great. Then they'll find like a decrepit <laughs> abandoned factory in yeah. Detroit or yeah. find like a drug street in Kensington. Yeah. They'll find the worst like garbage picture they right. can and then they put them mm. next to each other to juxtaposition mm. and this is kind of 
to them, this is proof that China's great and America's bad. Yeah. But you know what? I got a little pissed off about this because I think it's, it's nonsense. so stupid. I feel like kids might fall for this, though. Yeah, so I I went and took a <laughs> cherry-picked picture of Detroit at night with the skyline, which is beautiful, by the way. Yeah, it's gorgeous. It looks Look incredible. And then yeah. I found a cherry-picked, like, poverty Shanghai picture. Because you know what? You do still find really gross parts of Shanghai. Of course. You go about an hour any out the mega center. City, any city in yeah. China. You just go a little bit out and it's like looks like you've gone back a few hundred years. Yeah. You know, maybe you drive an hour out of the main city yeah, center. Yeah. Might take you a little while in Shanghai, but, but it's you'll still get there. Shanghai. You'll get there. So <clears throat> I, just, I just replied with Detroit 2023 versus Shanghai 2023. Your enemy isn't USA. It's the lame disinformation agents trying to sell you a lie. <laughs> nice. And that's it. I'm so tired of this cherry picking bullshit. Yeah. And people fall for it, man. They keep showing like homeless drug addicts in America and then a shiny mega thing. Yeah. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like a, it's a the train dumbest station. propaganda, but it's weirdly effective for like people that want to blame something other than themselves. And, and I find that a lot of Americans are self deprecating and yeah, they think they America is such a terrible place. Right. So they jump on that shit. Yeah. They're like, see, look, China's building yeah. these. Flashy buildings. Well, guess what? Those flashing, flashy buildings flood whenever there's a little trickle of rain. Yeah. So, yeah, this you know. is just so low effort. Yeah. So a, a, bu a bunch of other people piled in as well, and they were like, "Look here, this is Times Square 2023 <laughs> right. versus a village in China 2023." And I mean, you could do this with anything. You could do that with anything. So I thought I'd prove it. Okay. Because yeah. you know, I'm from South Africa, right? Sure. Johannesburg is a shithole. Okay? okay. It was at its heyday it was probably in like the 50s or something. Okay. Right. Long time ago. Now it's by the way there's a massive gas explosion in in um, in uh, Johannesburg. I've got a lot of footage and pictures. The roads all tore up and stuff. So it's you know it's all run down to shit. It's a crime hole, okay. But then look at this lovely picture of Johannesburg at night. That's when it's when the power's on actually, right. which is not that often. But anyway, right. I took a picture of uh, Johannesburg at night and Beijing in one of those just. Even in the hutongs, you know, it's not even that far out, like type thing. No. And this is 2023. So I'm like, Johannesburg, South Africa, 2023 versus Ch Beijing, China, 2023. This selective glam shot versus dirty pick nonsense is ridiculous. And it is it's because pathetic. anyone could do it. Anyone can do it. Take this. the most go Paris. You can yeah. find lots of filthy, disgusting. Oh, yeah. You find a you dead. You can also make it look amazing. Yeah. You find a dead rat next to some disgusting, like, you know, <laughs> pile of dirt that someone <laughs> threw garbage. You know, you can find that and say Paris versus and go to like Beirut and take a nice picture at night in a beautiful building. You could also <laughs> say, look at, you know, delicious meal versus toilet full of shit. Used to be delicious <laughs> yeah, meal. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's literally yeah. the most low effort shit. Yeah. But I'm just, I, I want to raise a little bit of awareness. Uh, for everyone who might come across this because it is so easy to cherry pick right and you can make with the right photography you take this long exposure photography of a city at night you can make the worst shittiest city or town look incredible nice okay a good photographer can do that and it's very very easy to go and cherry pick a dirty ass picture of a dirty disgusting thing go find a uh, a homeless encampment somewhere and you get them in China too, you could do it too, you know, and just go take a photo and say, this is indicative of the whole country. Right. And this is what pisses me off because these flashy buildings like in Shanghai, it's not indicative of the whole country. No. There's Jeez. a... Dude, I could take you, I mean, if I could ever get back into China, but I could literally take you five to 10 minutes outside of some areas that you would be very impressed with looking at from the yeah. outside, especially at night. The lights on. I could take you on a bus, a local bus outside of these areas, and you will be absolutely shocked, and you will think you are in impoverished country in an Af in Africa or India. Yeah, like a very, very like developing country. It is not a rich country. It is a country, and I I don't want to remind everyone of this over and over again. The average income in America per person GDP is seventy one thousand dollars. In China, it's twelve thousand dollars, and the wealth inequality in China to make that twelve thousand dollars, which is already low. Yeah is insane. You have so many very upper echelon rich people that are buying $2 million apartments in Beijing. Yeah, that get flooded with sewage. They get flooded with sewage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At the top, that are skewing. Think about how many poor people are there to bring that down to $12,000. Yeah, exactly. It's bad. It's really bad. Anyway, that just kind of annoys the crap out of me, so I had to uh, put it out there for everyone to see, and I guess it's time for Worldview. Yep. This is where we talk about everything in the world, specifically with regards to China. Now, what have you got for us today? Something that's big in the news, eh? Qin Gang, uh, foreign minister of China. Yeah. Uh, kind of the kind of person that you would expect to be uh, in public all the time. Because what do they do? Well, the whole point is that they're supposed to go be the face of China to go interface with other countries. Yeah. So you know how diplomacy works. Basically, 
not it's not necessarily the president or the leader that's going to do this. They'll have a cabinet of foreign ministers that go out mm. and diplomats that will go out and talk to other countries' leaders or other countries' cabinets to say, hey, let's strike up a deal. Yeah. Hey, maybe don't do this to us anymore. Hey, maybe do less of this, do more of this, right? You usually want your foreign minister to be out there as the face of the country in a positive light. Sure. Unfortunately, with China, the way that diplomacy's worked is it's turned into something called wolf warrior diplomacy, mm. meaning that they go out there and they say, enough's enough. People are going to respect China, whether it's by the sword or, you know, through friendly means. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, Xi Jinping, as the leader of China, has chosen the negative way to portray China around the world. They've really just turned into the world's bully. Yeah. Now, with the foreign minister out there trying to make amends, really, in some ways, you probably want them out there on, on duty. But unfortunately, for the past three weeks, their foreign minister has not been seen, and this is unprecedented. Yeah, he's disappeared. There's a couple of reasons. There's a couple of reasons. There's a rumor that he had an affair with somebody from state media. Some well, Phoenix, Phoenix TV, TV reporter, very pretty. But that's what I was seeing on the Chinese internet. There's mm. a lot of discussion around this. And the reason Which, is she just gave birth in the U.S. Yes, to a, to an American citizen child. Yeah, well, I mean, you give birth in the U.S. That Whoever's born in yes. America is an that's American a, citizen. Americans, Non-Americans might not know that. Yeah, and, and this is something that is horrendous for the Chinese government because they keep trying to stop their top leaders from escaping to America. Yes. Okay, and they don't want to endorse America in yeah. any way, shape, or form. Right. So imagine you have the foreign minister has a mistress who now goes and has a kid in America. I mean, he's not going to escape to America, but the fact that he has any ties and to America publicly... And the fact that he publicly, allowed that to happen. Yeah. The fact that he's doing... He's probably doing that so that he can set up a trust fund so he can get his money out. Yes. That happens a lot, by the way, because you can set up a trust fund in your um, child's name mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. funnel money out of, uh, you know, China into America that way. Now, this is why I'm glad... By real you, estate, all that? I'm glad yeah. you brought this up, but that's probably not what happened. Sure, but that's that's the rumor that's been going around Which the Chinese Which means that's not internet. what happened. All right. Because if it's spread around the Chinese internet... Oh, no, it was, it was, you cannot search his name but anymore. But it, it proliferated long mm -hmm. enough to where pretty much everyone has gotten a taste of this story. Sure, sure. That is probably... It could be an element of what happened. I think it's an element. But it doesn't necessarily mean that that's what happened. Yeah. A lot of expert opinions right now are claiming that there is a lot of political infighting within the CCP right now. And Qinggan, Qinggan or any real, any, but anybody that was kind of cherry picked by Xi Jinping is disposable ultimately. <laughs> This guy is disposable at the end of the day because Xi Jinping can literally pick another yes man Any from day. anywhere yeah. and just make him the next foreign minister. The problem is, is that Qing Gang only got his job because he was close to Xi Jinping. He's, I mean, I would say uh, at the bottom end of talent, the talent pool. Sure. This guy hasn't really shown any modicum of good diplomacy or any like good skills. You think Xi Jinping said Qing Gang off, buddy? That's very rude. <laughs> Anyway, because well, yeah, it's, it's we not, not even the right. Sound? I know, I know, but like you can, you know what I mean. Ching yeah. means please, can mean please in a different, complete different tone. Except that's Ching and Gun. You mean like F? Whatever, yeah, and you know? that's Gun, not Gun. I know, but so what? <laughs> Maybe he said it just like that. Yeah, sure. Ching Gun off, buddy. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and back to the reality of this. Sorry, situation. sorry, I just had to throw uh, a little humor. Good night. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, um, roll, bro. So the, the thing is, there's a lot of things that you can do when you're in such a fragile political system in a one-party state mm. within the party to fall out of favor with somebody that owns you and made you. See, I've talked about this before, the kind of the political structure of how the CCP works, the Chinese government. It is not by any means a democracy at all. But there is enough layers in the, in the CCP that where they kind of have to follow the rules or bribe the right people or... You know, there's there's enough kind of internal turmoil that kind of allows better, more talented people to rise up. Yeah. Until you got into a situation with like Xi Jinping that is talentless, really, in the grand scheme of things, and has wiped out all competition, all that turmoil within the party, mm. and has made everybody a follower, a blind follower of him. So where now he can say, no, I don't like your behavior. No, I don't like this about you. No, I don't like this person, and make people vanish. And that's right. why when I say unprecedented, we don't see we didn't see things like this before sure. because. This is the new realm of China. It's become a very fragile, crazy, tumultuous time within sure. the CCP. And we'll never know what happens. Yeah, who knows? Maybe he'll turn up in the World Tennis Organization or whatever will be talking to him. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> the I mean, World Olympic or whatever. Bach or whatever. That guy yeah, was. whatever the hell. It wasn't the World Tennis. It was someone else. or so the Olympic. Yeah, it was Bach. Maybe, yeah, yeah. The Olympic Commission will talk to him and he'll be like, oh, look, I'm totally fine. Here are my stuffed animals in my room. I feel yeah. like that's going to be him. And, uh, yeah, if he ever surfaces again. <clears throat> anyway, you get the idea.
Um, so we'll give you updates on that. Yeah, when uh, when we find out, if we find out whatever happened to this poor poor guy. Ching gong, ching gong. Oh yeah. Oh, you already uh, did this. Yeah, sorry, that's just a repeat. You know, you guys need to see that see that again. Mm-hmm. Uh, this just came out. Uh, it's a bit harrowing. Mm. Uh, why don't I just play it? Get yeah, we'll, we'll get out of here. You guys can see it. Let me put it on. Make sure there's volume. Yeah. <laughs> 你好，欢迎拨打国家安全机关受理公民和组织举报电话。那是风浪突袭向角，我就出幕后黑手，助力海燕和亲。Wait, I mean, I guess we got to pop in here. Yeah, sure. Basically, this is a you know, it's propaganda video from the national security thing, and you know, they basically admitted, you know, that they ratted out yes. some, someone ratted out the the leader of the hong kong democracy protests yep. and got them uh arrested yeah. and all that yeah and they're celebrating. very legitimate protests yeah they're celebrating it yes mm. and not just celebrating it basically saying like we won yeah it's salt in the wound for the millions of hong kongers that stood up for their rights that day yeah or those days i should say yeah no it was crazy to see um anyway it's like oh yeah when the storms hit hong kong <laughs> I expose the hidden hand mm. behind the scene. By the way, they've confirmed, yeah, the Chinese government's take on this is that it was American meddling that created Hong Kong, millions, millions of Hong Kong protesters to stand up for their democracy. Not the fact that they were, you know, in a democratic system with freedom of speech that were participating in English on an international stage that wanted nothing to do with China. Had nothing yeah. to do with that. I got to say that this hidden hand looks a lot like Che Guevara, doesn't he? <laughs> doesn't he? It's oh, it like does. smoking a cigar with He's a beret. Hidden, he's supposed to be and a CIA. Beard. I, I guess Che Guevara is CIA. Oh, nice. But I, I mean, know, like, I had no idea. Well, of course, the hidden hand is going to be a foreigner. It could never be like an actual Hong Kong person who cares about Hong Kong. Right? Nope. No, not at all. It'll be a hidden. And they're relentlessly going after the protest organizers right now, hunting yeah. them down globally. I mean, they've put out bounties on yeah. them. It's yeah. disgusting. Anyway, let's continue with this nonsense. So then they pass the nest. I like that horrible, grim bell. I know. And it's like, oh, peace and tranquility followed after they put the national security law. This is the law, basically, that says that if you say anything bad about the CCP in Hong Kong, which was a, a free territory before, yes. you, you can go to jail for treason, more or less. And it's, it's as simple as that. Remember, they said they weren't going to use it. Yeah, no, they're using it. Yeah. Anyone who believed them was a fool. And we yes. called this, you know. So, so Anyway, long. I mean, just, just take a look at the, you have to look at the wording here because it's so important. Absolute leadership of the party is my faith at the bottom of my heart. This is not China 15 years ago. No. This is a new China we're dealing with. So, um... It's a scary time. They got rid of religion and replaced, well, money and the uh, CCP is now your new That's faith. your new god. Because, oh, because the economy is downturning as well. So you're yeah. literally going to have the party left. So absolute leadership of the party is my faith at the bottom of my heart. Okay, yes. I think it gets even better. I swear. By the moon, <laughs> by the hammer and sickle, and <laughs> I willingly dedicate myself to the noble cause of state security. All right. I obey the leadership of the Chinese Communist Party. Not the country. Now remember, this is not China. It's, it's not the party. Zhongguo. Yes. It's why Gongchandang. Yeah, Zhongguo to Gongchandang. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I obey the leadership of the Chinese Communist Party. Be absolutely loyal to the party. Okay, so this is the scary stuff, and this is what caused all the problems in the past. Is yeah. that the party? You have to be loyal. If they say you know kill your mother, you got to do it. Yeah, you know. And we saw the they celebrated ratting people out. But China is che, morally bankrupt. The, the Che Guevara guy, I I exposed the yes. hand, yeah. the deadly hand, or the black hand, or whatever they want to call it, the the hand job of the whatever. I'm so sick and tired of this nonsense. <laughs> like, how about just stopping this crap? Because now you see people shouting, "I will be absolutely loyal to the party. I'll put it above everything else." The Communist Party's leadership is the bottom faith in my heart. What kind of bullshit is this? this? I'm telling you, this is the new China we're dealing with. Yeah. It's a, this is the dangerous, scary China. It's uncertain China. Yeah. Stay firm and pure. Let the party rest assured. So, yeah, 
I yes. I will sacrifice myself basically for the party. Oh, <laughs> exactly. Oh my god. I know. Just let the party be be relaxed. Yeah. I'll take the brunt See? of it all. Yeah. <laughs> See? I'm willing to make sacrifices. I'm determined to fight and capable of winning. Yeah, whatever. This is such like depressing shit, isn't it? Yeah, just, this, is bad, this is really bad vibes, guys. Yeah, of course. <laughs> this is bad vibes. If you utilize if all means in carrying out our national security work. All means, and that includes infiltrating universities, yep. uh, bribing people, spying, whatever. Going abroad. Just Yeah, exactly. It's a lot all of costs, right? do not follow the laws of where you are. You follow the party. Yes, yeah, set up uh, clandestine police, police stations, stations. Do whatever. Red out networks. Yes. Mobilize the whole society for national security. See that? This is the stuff that foreign governments need to be paying attention to Absolutely. right now. Because this is the intent. Yes. This is at all costs. Yes. And... You know, this needs to be dealt with. Yeah, I mean, this this is clear as day. Yeah. Utilize the whole society. So every citizen of China is now a tool uh, for, for their national security. And this comes into play all the time. When you've got a yep. diaspora, somebody living in the States or in the UK or something, and they need something from them, they will use them. They will threaten their families back yep. home. They will do whatever they can to get Operation their information. Foxen. They find out somebody's working for a technology company. They will use them. They threaten their families back home. They'll say, they oh, you don't, oh, you don't want to do espionage? Well, guess what? Yeah. I've got your family here. I mean, first they'll try the carrot, and they'll be like, yeah. hey, listen, we'll set you up with your own research facility here in China, give you millions of dollars. All you need to do is take their intellectual property, proprietary information. If they say no, they're like, oh, well, guess what? Your grandma's sick. They're, I think that foreign countries like the U.S. in mm. particular, oh, probably Canada and Australia, I should yeah. say, in particular, need to make it very, very comfortable for Chinese people to be able to reach out to authorities to yeah. tell them that they are under duress from their government. Yeah, and not home. worry about all this, uh, this pushback because that's the only yeah. way you're going to beat it. Yeah. They need to be protected. Yes. And that's the thing. And uh, Get rid of WeChat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you need to break down like this barrier, too. If like people are, you know, the CCP wants Chinese diaspora to be scared of foreign governments and foreign law enforcement and... Uh, intelligence agencies, all this stuff that's perceived as the enemy. Yeah. So they don't want them to be able to reach out and get help. And or they, to, they or to say, stop this, right? the problem is in the communities, they always have some kind of uncle that's a CCP yeah. spy. Yeah. So, you know, if someone does reach out to the police, then the CCP knows about it. And so yeah. there need to be protections. It does. You know what I mean? Like an anonymous way yes. uh, for people to be... Or better outreach. I think yeah. better outreach to the Chinese community. You are? Anyway. Yeah. Because this is what's happening. Yeah. Of course, they have to show their, like, knockoff rockets and stuff. The effort of the Ministry of State and Security reaches out its way. Great, so we have the MSS up in space. So, now. the exactly. Awesome. That, you know when NASA was like, no, we're not going to allow China onto the International Space Station? Yeah. This is why. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. The Ministry of State Security reaches into outer <laughs> this space. MSS is like the, that's the department of the Chinese government that literally like captures it's like the, people. It's like the CIA, but worse. But yeah, it's it's beyond that. It's yeah. more like uh, it's more security apparatus, yeah. which like captures and spies on people. Exactly. So I mean, the fact that they're bragging about this being in space, if there were Chinese tachnauts or taikonauts as they're called you know like the astronaut version of, yeah. of uh, china if they were on the international space station you bet the mss would have been handpicked who goes up yeah, there for sure. and they will be like you steal all the the proprietary information and secrets and you spy on them and plant bugs yep that's what would have happened so we're sitting here looking at public this is this is intent. a self-admission from china yeah. and a, and this ratifies why nasa it stopped them going into the international yes. space station right here this this line right here this yeah. gets such bad vibes, yeah. by the way. This is like the worst thing we covered from the perspective of making me feel sick. Mm. Like, this is bad news bears. Yeah, remove thorns and build barriers to safeguard national security. So Because it's not just national security. No. It's, nas it's international dominance yes. and, 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 and uh, spying and duress and harassment. To remove thorns means any opposition. If yeah. someone's standing in your way or there's something that's preventing you from doing what you want, just kill them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. With me, a CCP state security agent upholding new security commitments. 
You don't need to search for me. What even is this nonsense? You yeah, might. Because I'm always here. Yeah, like always on yeah. duty, basically. No, I think it's, it's more like I'm watching you. <laughs> you know, the yeah, Ministry of the State Security low. is always there. I'm just reading the Chinese. It's more like it's more like if you choose to serve the M the Ministry of State Security, then yeah. you will always be on duty, ready ready to serve. I don't know, man. Don't die. It's like I'm always here. Like you don't need to search for me because I'm always here. I mean, yeah. No, but this is like addressing somebody that's going to be working. True, it's working like propaganda for, for that. But yeah. yeah, kind of scary, guys. Yeah, it's kind not, of not scary. Ideal. Not anyway, ideal. it's time for our Q and A. Just let let yep. your Congress people know about this. Yeah, can let get this out there because this is ridiculous. You shouldn't feel intimidated by this, this kind of stuff, hmm. especially the Chinese diaspora. You guys should not have no reason to feel intimidated by this kind of bullshit. Yeah. So reach out to your local areas. Figure out how to make outreach communities. Also, can people not see this? Yeah. Can yeah, people like, just why is not, this not see being this? Covered? Where why, is this? Why do we always see this crap about like, oh, we should be investing more in China. Yeah. Let's work together more. What are you more. doing? What the hell is all this all about? Like, can you guys not see what's going on? This is the message that the Chinese government is giving to the Chinese people. Okay, you can't see it because you don't understand Chinese and because you're not seeing it. But the Chinese people, no, you as in, in investment firms that still want to deal with China are full of shit, yeah. and you guys are willfully ignoring this stuff, putting mm -hmm. the world at greater risk so that you can get more wealthy, and that's fucked up. I agree. Yeah, it's time it's to be, it's time to decouple. Yeah, I hate to say it, but look, we have to find a better way. China needs to back off with this shit, you know. Yeah, yeah. It absolutely does, and. Play like a normal, friendly person. Yeah. Be a normal, friendly country that's adjust, willing to... Adjust. Readjust. Yeah. Stop freaking threatening everybody else. Yeah. Stop treating everyone else like a freaking enemy. Yep. Okay? We're supposed to be working together here. Yeah. Okay? And that's what, um, you know, China was built on. Yeah. Is the investment from the West. Okay? The modern China would not exist if it wasn't for... The West investing in it. Where do you think all that money came from? It's like didn't come out of the dirt in China. No. It came out of the fact that people invested and moved their factories there and started to bring money into the country yep. and build the economy. That's where it comes from. And all these stupid investments like your 401k. Look at your 401k. Speak to your investment manager. See if you've got anything in there that says Asia emerging, emerging markets. markets. Tell them to take that out. Okay? Because you're probably funding... This People's Liberation Army and the MSS through your own retirement fund. And I mean, you don't want that on your head, do you? No. I wouldn't. And also, maybe maybe don't let CCP-owned firms and unknown companies buy huge swaths of land next to military bases sure, and sure. Air Force bases. That too. Because that just, just happened today, I believe. Mm. Maybe don't allow that to happen in America. I would say so. Yeah, maybe like, it's almost like, I I, I don't, never mind. Let's just continue. Yeah, we will continue because it's our Q&A time. This is Yam Chao where we answer your questions and you question our answers. Please remember, guys, that this is something that stays up now live. It'll stay up over the weekend. We cut it out of the show on Monday. But of course, if you're a patron of any tier, not only do you get access to the Discord, but you also get the full episodes, including the full Q&A if you want to catch up at your own leisure later on. Do you say leisure or leisure? I say leisure. Yeah, I used to say leisure. Huh. I think it's probably I, British English. I, I think leisure is better for me, you know? Okay, but you Le just leisure, leisure suit Larry, you know? Yeah. Leisure suit Larry, yeah. yeah same thing. I leisure. don't care either way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But you call a ledger a leisure? A ledger. Yeah, ledger. But that's yeah. not spelled the same. No. So, <laughs> You're kind of like on point with really bad analogies today. Yes. It's, <laughs> this uh, is your on fire. It's my forte, forte today. So usually they're pretty good. Today. Yeah. I don't know what's going on, but it, uh, it 